We are on day three, Tuesday of our journey through Holy Week. Yesterday, Jesus cursed the fig tree and he cleansed the temple. And uh, they went back to Bethany to stay the night. And then they wake up on Tuesday morning. And uh, that's where we're going to pick up. We're going to be in Mark 11, starting in verse 20. It says, As they passed by in the morning, they saw the fig tree withered away to its roots. And Peter remembered and said to him, Rabbi, look, the fig tree that you cursed has withered. And it's funny because uh, Peter would be the guy to say this, um, even though Jesus knew that what he did had happened, that what we talked about yesterday, that those uh, that, that fig tree had been cursed to its roots and it was dead to its roots uh, had happened. And uh, so Peter is stating the obvious here, but they are seeing now that this tree has withered, that um, what Jesus did has come to pass. And Jesus answered them, verse 22, have faith in God. And so he's telling them, and we're going to get to this in a second, when Jesus goes to the temple to teach, he is telling them to have faith in him. He is telling them to have faith in his miracles and in, in his truth and what he has done and uh, what he's about to do for them on Friday, and that is uh, to be crucified on the cross for their sins. And so we have faith in in Jesus Christ. We believe in the one true God. We believe um, in, in his son, Jesus Christ as well. And so uh, we have faith as well. And we have faith in the truth of scripture, the revealed truth of who God is that's found in scripture. We have faith that God is righteous, that God is just, that God is merciful, that God is gracious, that he is uh, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. We have faith in those things that are founded in Scripture as well. In verse 23, he says, Truly I say to you, whoever says to this mountain, and this is the Mount of Olives that they're most likely standing on or that they're by, whoever says to this mountain, be taken up and thrown into the sea, that's the Dead Sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes that what he says will come to pass, it will be done for him. And so they would have known this uh, metaphor. Uh, there was a kind of a, a popular metaphor among Jewish literature, which was talking about a uh, rooter up of mountains. Uh, and this is somebody who was able to solve difficult problems. It was somebody who was able to do seemingly the impossible. And uh, Jesus is telling them that God can do the impossible. And uh, what we're talking about here is salvation. Like, I cannot save myself. I cannot do it. It is impossible for me to do it. Uh, it's impossible to get to heaven except for God, except for Jesus Christ and uh, what he has done for us. And so when we think about being throwing a mountain like Camelback Mountain into, I don't know, Lake Pleasant, um, that's, that's not physically possible. Um, and so Jesus is talking about something that's extremely difficult, a really hard problem to solve, uh, which is our salvation. It's an extremely hard problem to solve, except for Jesus is going to solve this problem on Friday when he dies on the cross for our sins. Verse number 24. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. Now, obviously, that's according to God's will. That's according to what's founded in scripture. Um, we can't just pray for any old thing and it's going to come to pass, but it should be rooted in who, who God is, what his will is for um, our lives, and what's founded in scripture. Verse 25, and whenever you stand praying, forgive if you have anything against anyone so that your father who, who is in heaven may forgive your trespasses. And so we forgive because God has forgiven us because of how much we realize that God has forgiven us, then we um, ask him, we, we ask him in, in prayer. We ask him in prayer and we say, God, please give me the forgiveness that I need to give to this person who has um, done, done some wrong to me. And uh, that's in accordance with God's will. And I believe that he's gonna answer that prayer. Uh, other prayers that you can ask um, in accordance with God's will is what we talked about yesterday, the fruit of the spirit. Um, who God is, that he is patient, that he is gracious, that he is righteous. Help me to be righteous as you are righteous. Help me to be loving as you are loving. Those are prayers that we can pray. Verse number 27, uh, the, the title of this in my Bible is The Authority of Jesus Challenged. And so now this is going to come to a head. Jesus cleansed the temple yesterday. Now he's back at the temple 
and you're going to see that um, that the chief priests, the scribes, the fair, they are they are not happy with him at all, and they are going to challenge him. And obviously, this is going to come to a head at the end of the week when they uh, end up cruci um, crucifying him on the cross. And so, uh, verse number twenty-seven. It says, And they came again to Jerusalem, that's Jesus and his disciples. And as he was walking in the temple, the chief priests and the scribes and the elders came to him. And they said to him, By what authority are you doing these things? Or who gave you this authority to do them? And so Jesus is pretty much a self-prescribed rabbi. And he's going into the temple and he's teaching and he's doing miracles and he's forgiving sins. And uh, the Pharisees and the scribes and the chief priests, they are done with this. They are they are wanting to know by whose authority do you do this? I think they already know the answer to this question, um, but, but they're just um, asking it, kind of uh, being facetious here. Verse number 29, Jesus said to them, and this was a popular thing to do, was to um, respond to a question with a question, and so he does this in verse 29. Jesus said to them, I will ask you one question. Answer me, and I will tell you by what authority I do these things. Was the baptism of John from heaven or from man? What a great question. And then he says, answer me. And they discussed it with one another, saying, If we say from heaven, he will say, Why then do you not believe him? But shall we say from man? They were afraid of the people. For they all held that John really was a prophet. So they answered Jesus, We do not know. And Jesus said to them, Neither will I tell you by what authority I do these things. So Jesus, with his question, he traps these religious leaders. He traps the chief priests and the Pharisees and the scribes. And he asks them the question, uh, was the baptism of John from heaven or from man? And if they answered this question from heaven, then they would have had to affirm John and they would have had to affirm Jesus and that Jesus was actually from heaven. <clears throat> because John and Jesus, um, they both said that they were from heaven. And they both, um, and John the Baptist pointed at Jesus and said, this is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. And so they would have had to admit, if they admitted from John, they would have had to admit that Jesus then came uh, from heaven as well. But then they didn't want to say from man because they knew that the people believed that John was from heaven. And so Jesus really trapped them here. And he, um, he, he did a little verbal jujitsu on them. And he trapped them. And, and they give one of the lamest answers ever. Neither, or, or, I'm sorry, um, we do not know. We do not know. And so when we think about this today, when we think about what the things I said about the fig tree earlier, about faith and about prayer, obviously those are things we can apply to our lives today. But also the big thing that I want to talk about is, is we can't have the excuse of one day we do not know who Jesus is. We have the evidence in Scripture, and I, and I would um, say to people, Look at the evidence. It's good to look at the evidence. Don't just take this at face value. See if there is historical evidence. See if there is archaeological evidence. Um, do some research yourself and don't just believe me. Don't just believe any old pastor out there. But do this research yourself and see if it's true or not. Um, and and if it's not, then, then be bold enough, unlike the Pharisees here, and the chief priest to say it's not true, or um, to, to answer and say, no, this is true, and now I have to come to, to grips with this. Um, and so this is something that we all have to do. We all have to see if this is true, to see if Jesus is from heaven, to see if Jesus truly is uh, the second person of the Trinity, that he is God the Son, and uh, if he is, and if he did die for our sins, then we have to come to grips with that. If he did walk this earth and do miracles, then we have to uh, we have to submit to that, and we have to say that he is Lord. And, and uh, we can't just give the answer of we do not know. And uh, for Christians out there, don't give the answer of um, to people 
that you can say you don't know about certain things in the Bible, but also do your own research. Please be like a Berean and research things, study them for yourself, and uh, give, give an answer for why you believe what you believe, um, as Peter tells us to do as well. And so I want to pray for you, and uh, I, I pray that you have a great evening, and uh, we will be back tomorrow uh, for Wednesday of Holy Week, and uh, we're going to talk about how the, this came to a head and how the chief priests, the Sanhedrin, all of the religious leaders got together to plot against Jesus um, and then eventually put him on the cross. So let me pray for you, and I hope you have a great evening. Heavenly Father, I thank you that um, each time that um, we do truly research this, not necessarily what somebody has said about this, but when we truly research what this says, what you say, because this is your word, this is God breathed. I pray that uh, when we research this, that we would see more and more and more and more that this is true and that it would bolster our faith and that we would have faith in you, that we would have faith in your word and uh, how what it has revealed um, about life, what it has revealed, revealed about you, what it has revealed about us. And I pray that we would put our faith and our trust in you and what it says. And I also pray that we as Christians, that we would um, open this book and that we would research and that we would see what it truly says and uh, that we would do even more research, um, historical evidence, archaeological evidence, and that that would bolster our faith. And so I pray that um, you would help us to give, a, give an answer for why we believe what we believe. And I pray that as we do that, that it would, um, that it would produce faith in other people and that you would save um, because you are so loving and gracious. And you did come to seek and to save the lost, Jesus. And we thank you for that tonight. And I pray um, that we would believe that, we would trust in that, and that we um, would look to you in prayer, and that we would align it with God's will. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.